Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the install of Mac OS Server and some of the initial setup information that's on the Server tab. Now, in the series that I've done already, I've shown how to do a upgrade and I've shown also how to do a clean install and how to remove Server uh, as well. And so what we're going to do this time is start fresh and just take a look at what it looks like to install server and then start to do some of the initial setup uh, things with the server tab. So this is the uh, server application here. It's Mac OS Server. Now this goes with Sierra. Now a difference in this one is it's only a point upgrade. It's not a full upgrade. So we've been using server version 5 with El Capitan server. Now we've got 5.2 uh, which is the starting point for Sierra server. And so it does have a few extra features and things that we'll cover along the way with just a few little uh, changes here and there. But I still want to be able to walk you through the process. Now, server is $19.99, which again is still a really good deal. Uh, the nice part about this upgrade, if you've already purchased server, uh, it doesn't cost you any more. Uh, this is just uh, a point upgrade, so there's no upgrade cost and you have everything you need and ready to go. So to get started, let's go ahead and open the server app. I've already installed it, so let's go ahead and hit on open there. I'm just going to put this down. And so when we do that, we get this screen right here. And it asks me to choose a Mac that I want to use to manage server. And so I'm going to say this, uh, this Mac here is where we're going to set up server. I'm going to say continue. And it, and it asks if I uh, agree with the software licensing terms. And uh, it also has this checkbox if you want to allow Apple to determine the server's internet reachability. And that's a service that Apple has built in where it will ping your server for the different ports uh, to let you know whether they're publicly accessible or not. So you can uncheck that if you don't want that. Uh, I'd recommend having it because it is kind of a nice diagnostic tool. It's not always 100% accurate, but it's still a nice thing to have. So I'm going to say agree on this. And it's going to ask me to authenticate. And once I've done that, I'll just click on Allow. And so now it's going to set up server on this Mac, and you can see it's getting host names. And right here is where it tells you what it's doing as it's doing it. Uh, it's going to create a certificate, identity, identity certificate. It's going to prepare the services. And you can see it's kind of rolling through each and every service that it's preparing. Uh, most of these go pretty quickly. Some of them might take a little longer than others. And so... Um, we'll just kind of watch as this goes through and adds all of these components. Um, but like I said, this is a clean install. I've uninstalled my server components before, so it's having to add all of these different things back in, which is what we want because we don't want to have uh, any of the old stuff picked up. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run, and when it's finished, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we are on the other side. So the uh, installation has taken place. And you'll notice we, again, get this uh, tutorial here that helps you set up various uh, services. Uh, for instance, you know, sharing files. It talks about what file sharing is. Kind of goes through different lessons here. You can see setting up file sharing. And if we just kind of pop these down, it kind of takes you through and even shows you uh, some diagrams here to show you where to put things and how to set things up. And so this is something that they added in the uh, last couple of server builds. And again, it's just a, a nice thing that you can always get to just by going to the help menu up at the top uh, menu there. Uh, you can always pull this back up and take a look at it if you wanted to go back and, and just check something out really quick and, and that sort of thing. So we're, we're confronted with this first. So let me go ahead and just put this down. And so here we are with the uh, clean install. And as you can see, we've got everything set here and ready to go. Uh, you'll notice that we've got um, here all of the different tabs on the side. And let me just show the advanced area here. Uh, all of these are the same as we've seen in the previous server edition. Uh, remember that this is a point uh, upgrade. It's not an entire number upgrade. And so, therefore, there's just some changes to the system, uh, but not a complete overhaul. Um, as we go through this, I'll walk through it again, and we will cover the different areas. But just wanted to kind of make you aware that uh, everything basically on the side here is the same. Now, as we come in here, you'll notice 
that uh, we've got the server tab interface here. And what I want to do is just help you start with this initial setup uh, because this is going to basically set the direction of how you use server. Now, one of the things that may happen to you uh, that I have seen happen if you've uh, kept your install, you've done an uninstall of server, tried to wipe all the files, but yet sometimes the host name still shows up here. Uh, this is a clean install, so I don't have the host name here, but just in case your old host name shows up here, uh, what you could do if you wanted to start all over is just edit host name, set it at your uh, server's name dot local, let that run through, and then you can be right where we're at right here to be able to make those changes and do it again. Like I said, sometimes this has happened. Uh, just if you miss one cache file, it's sometimes it's just hard to get everything wiped off. Uh, even with the uh, tutorial that I gave you on how to do that, that you may have to do that part yourself. So let's start with this uh, overview tab here. Uh, a couple of things that you notice. Uh, we've got our host name, which I'm going to show you how to edit that here in a second. You can edit your computer name in here. If I just tap on that, you can see that you can change the computer name to whatever you want, and that's what it'll show up on your local uh, computer. We're going to go ahead and click off that. Uh, down here, you'll notice that we've got uh, internet uh, reachability, and you can see it's reachable at my public IP address. It says no services are available. And so let me just uh, click into that for a minute to show you what this looks like. So when you come in here, you can see that we've got um, the services enabled. You can see we've got our external IP address. Uh, public host name, which we don't have any right now because we haven't set that up. And you can see that it's checking right now to see what services are available. Now it should come back with uh, pretty much nothing available because we haven't set anything up yet. Um, but once we open the ports on our router that allow for these services to be available, it goes and touch, uh, it goes and tries to reach and ping your server through those different ports to see what services are available and are reachable from the internet. Uh, like I said, right now we don't have anything set up, so nothing is set up there. But I just wanted to show you how that works. Let's go ahead and just uh, say done here. All right, so that's how the reachability service works. Now, one of the things I found is depending on when you're trying it out, it may not be accurate all the time. So if you, for some reason, show no services available or the service you need to have available doesn't show up, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not available. Uh, you still want to do your own tests with your hardware and stuff off your network to see if you can reach it remotely because uh, there are a lot of factors that go into this, and this is not perfect. So don't rely on this as the only way of testing whether or not something is reachable. All right, you can see how long the computer's been running for. We've got our builds down here, and we've got our uh, Ethernet interfaces here. Now, one of the things that more ISPs are rolling out is IP version 6. Um, IP addresses are coming out, and so you can see here it shows my IP6 number. It's just a really long string of numbers. This is because we're running out of IP version 4 addresses, and so they're starting to convert over to that. So I just want to let you know that that is there, and so you just kind of, if you see those extra numbers, you know why that's the case. All right, so let's go ahead and start by editing our host name because this is going to determine the direction of our server. So I'm going to click on edit host name and it's going to uh, evaluate our network and check everything out before it displays uh, information. Okay, we'll say next. And so now this is where we have our choice. And so I want to walk through this because this is going to set the direction of the type of server that you're using. Uh, the first one there is local network, and so basically what that means is you can only access your server on your local network, network and your host name will end in .local. So you won't be able to access it outside your network. So those of you that just want to use local services, maybe file sharing, time machine backups, uh, those kinds of things, uh, and you only want to access them on your local network, that's the one that you want to choose because you really have no reason to choose anything else. Uh, the second one down here is the local network and VPN. And this allows you to access your server on your local network and with a host name ending in .private. Okay, so that's how they want you to set it up. Now, users can then access your servo server remotely using VPN. So those of you that want to get back into your server, uh, but you don't want to have all the services and ports, let's say, open on the Internet, but you just kind of want to get in for services and that sort of thing, uh, you can use VPN in order to do that. And I'm going to show you how to set all of this up, but that's a choice that you could make as well, which just says, hey, the only way to access it remotely is to use a VPN connection. Okay, and that is built into server. And then this final one down here is internet, and this allows you to access your server both locally and over the internet with a registered domain name. And what that means is that you've got a domain name registered somewhere, you know, like uh, you know, domain.com or something like that, that you've purchased that domain name, and now you can use that domain name to access your server uh, uh, remotely, and you can access all the services remotely as well without having to use a VPN. 
So you can choose which of these work best for you. For me, I'm just going to use internet because I've got a registered name that I want to use. And I'm going to click on next. Now this is where you set up your, uh, you can set up your computer name and your host name. Now the, uh, again, the computer name is what people will see in the finder on your local network. And so I've already got that set up as server. So I like that. I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, but now this host name is where you're going to set this up. And this is where if you're using dot local, you would leave this alone or maybe just change the name to whatever you want. Uh, if you're going to use the VPN, you would have it end in dot private. Uh, or if you're going to use your actual domain, you'd put it in here. Now, a couple of things I want to tell you. Uh, number one, if you have a domain registered on the Internet and you are using it uh, also that that domain registrar is hosting your website, so someone else is hosting your website outside your network, then what you're going to want to do is put a prefix in front of whatever your domain name is. So, for instance, let me just show you what that might look like. So I might say, in this case, you know, server.domain.com. All right, that's if I've got my website hosted out there. Now, the reason for that is, is let me just come back here. If I just use domain.com, okay, because I've got that domain registered, what's going to happen is the server is going to look to itself for all services inside that domain. So when you're on your local network, it will not pull up your website because your it's going to look to itself for a website and say it's not here. Uh, so if you've got your website hosted somewhere else or you're hosting any other services on the outside, uh, maybe mail or something like that, then rather than doing this domain, you're going to want to put a prefix in front of it like server.domain.com or whatever it is that you want to put in, in front of that. That's what you're going to want to do. You could put home, you could put local, you can put whatever you want in front of that. And I'm going to show you how to set up the DNS for it. Um, but that's how you want to how you want to set that up, and that's going to make all the difference in the world there for you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set this up uh, for my uh, server right now. Okay, now that I've got my host name configured, I'm going to say finish, and it's going to give me this drop down that says, "Do you want to set up DNS?" And so, server can automatically set up the DNS for you that will resolve to your host name, so that uh, you can use your uh, server to handle DNS. Now, I would just recommend going ahead and doing this. Uh, it's only in the rare uh, occasion that you may want to have something different uh, where you want to skip this. But I'm going to go ahead and say set up DNS and let it take care of it for me. And you can see it's configuring the network. It's updating the services for my host name. And it's kind of finishing the whole deal up here. So I'm going to let it finish uh, the updating of all the different services. And so it's creating the records, creating the DNS records for you and getting everything set up. And once that's done, now you can see the host name is all set up. We've got everything ready to go here uh, on the server. And you can see down below here, it has actually set up our DNS for us and the green lights on. I'm going to go into DNS in more detail, but just wanted to show you how that works. And so I would absolutely recommend doing that, uh, having it set up um, automatically for you, especially if you're going to use a prefix like server.something.com. Uh, it's just a really good way of setting it up. Okay, now that we've covered the overview tab, let's just take a look at a few of these other ones. Uh, here we have settings, and this is where we can determine our remote access. Uh, so this is SSH. If you want to be able to get into your server using the command line, you would check this. Uh, I'm just going to check this off. Um, for those of you that don't use the command line at all, you might as well turn this one off because what will happen is, is if you open up that port, that's a typical port where people, you know, kind of almost like says, hey, I'm here, and uh, people will, you know, potentially try to hack into your server and that sort of thing. So if you're not going to use it um, at all, then I would just go ahead and turn it off because it won't be of any value to you. Uh, here we have screen sharing with uh, Apple and remote desktop app. Uh, you can see I can turn that on or off. And again, if I say turn it off, are you sure you want to uh, disable uh, remote management if you want to do that? I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to disable it for right now. Actually, let's go ahead and there we go. So I've just disabled a screen sharing application there. Uh, so if you're going to use screen sharing, you want to go ahead and check that on. Uh, I'm using something else for that, so I'm going to leave it off. Uh, you can also say, do you want to use the server on a remote Mac? Now, this would be allowing yourself to use this application, and you install server on your remote Mac, and then you would be able to get into this application, all right, into your server on your remote Mac, looking at it just like we're looking at it here on the server itself. Um, so that is a good service. I'm going to go ahead and check that. 
Uh, we can also set up Apple push notifications. And so that's if you want to have uh, different push notifications for services like Calendar and Contacts and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to leave that off for now because I'm going to show you what that looks like when we set up some of the other services, but just wanted to let you know that that's there. And then here we can change the location of service data. So that would be your server folder that would have all the different data on your different services here. Uh, if you wanted to move that to a different location, you can just click on the shared location and choose where you want to put it. And you can see the service data right now is only 385 megabytes. If that started getting a little big, uh, you can actually move it to a different spot if you want to do that. I'm just going to leave this alone for now. Now we also have a storage tab here where we can take a look at all of our different storage options. And in here, we can go through and actually set permissions uh, for different things if we wanted to do that. Uh, for instance, you see here I've got a new folder. I can edit permissions, propagate per permissions, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to do an in-depth screencast on how to do that and work with um, permissions because that's something that comes up quite frequently for people. And then finally, we've got this access tab. And so we can say default user access. We can say all users have access or only some. And if we choose only some, then it allows us to select, for instance, uh, which users have access. You just start typing in the name and you can add only specific people who can access the server by default. I'm going to cancel that. Uh, I can do the same thing with default networks. I've got all networks. I can say only private networks, only this Mac, or only some networks. And this comes into play if you're on a kind of a multi-network system uh, where you might want to um, specify particular networks that are um, able to be accessed or you want to just limit them uh, to particular ones. And then you can set custom access to services in here. And you can see uh, all users for local subnets, uh, FTP is administrators on all networks with these ports. And so you can kind of add that information in here, or you can also uh, come in here and edit the custom access or edit the networks in here as well for the particular services that you've got there. And so again, this just comes in handy if you want to sort of limit um, who has access to certain services and to the server itself. So let's just go ahead and come back here to overview. So that gives you an idea of how to do the initial setup of server. Uh, you know, again, it's uh, uh, depending on what you're using your server for. Hopefully that helps you determine what you're looking for. Uh, you can see it's already detected that my server is reachable over the Internet by my uh, domain name because I've got that set up already. And I'm going to show you how to set that up remotely. Um, but just wanted to show that that's there. Uh, one more thing you'll notice, I did get an alert. You'll probably get an alert here that just says your host uh, name has been changed. If I double click on that, it says, hey, the host name's changed, but the issue's resolved and everything's okay. I can say done, and then I can just come in here and delete the alert and get rid of it and go back to normal. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.